And Bama messaged me about Jasmine's doing well in the second day in a row. That's not doing well, in my opinion. This is a trap. What you see on that Jasmine right here, definitely a trap. Dude, I've been able to take profits about every hour for the past two days. On Jasmine? Yeah. How many scalps have you done on it? At least 48. <laughs> At least. Oh, okay. The only way I would touch Jasmine if it accumulates at a lower price. I don't buy on these spikes up. No, nah, I didn't buy when it spiked up. I bought it when it went way down. Yeah, Jasmine is just... I don't like the tokenomics. I don't like how it's dispersed. 27 it's just watts. the ATM right now. Speaking about ATM, let's check Gallo real quick. Oh my god. Look at this daily chart on Gala. So, I had this triangle that Gala was trying to fill. And it did break it broke the triangle a little bit. And I predict that it's going to come back into the triangle and then break down. We already broke out. It spiked up to 24. That triggered a double top. We became bearish. Um boom, 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 boom. So that was a double top on the daily. And I figure, hey, if we come back down under 20 and then break this wedge going down, we could see double bottom around 15.49. Uh, if we get double bottom 15.49, then my short will be ultimately printing. I still got my gala short open. It's uh, 20 times Gala short since 36 cents and uh, keeping that open for a while. I do think that we're going to be on a bearish trend still because they are going to change the interest rates. And people seem to forget $2 trillion, not a lot of money in the markets compared to the global market. So I try to warn people at least $2 trillion is going to be pulled out of the stock market. Gold gold's worth over twelve trillion dollars. So I think even if two trillion dollars pulled out of the markets, that's gonna be huge for crypto. Because I feel like a lot of people are gonna pull money out of crypto as well. It's gonna be a knee-jerk reaction. If you see some stocks fall like twenty to thirty percent, you may not be comfortable holding crypto because some people want to trade that crypto for some of these stocks. So that's something to consider. But yeah, Gala, they do have their games, which is pretty cool. Uh, right. Nate Campbell says, what was the stock ticker AMC bought? It's called HYMC. And let me put the full trends chart. They bought Highcroft Mining Holding Corporation. This is the stock ticker that AMC purchased. They had an investment of over $50 million into this company. And the market cap of this company is only like 80 about $87 million. So HYMC, this is the ticker that AMC Movie Theater bought. It's, it's like a random move that they bought this gold mine. <laughs> it's very random. Uh, this is the daily chart. It's already coming back down. It ran up. It's coming back down. It's a very wild play by AMC. But hey, $80 million? That's not a lot of money to acquire a mining company. $80 million is not a lot of money. The uh, stock price is already coming back down. Now you guys want to see something very interesting. 
there's about 60 viewers in here. Not many viewers, so you guys are going to get in early. Let's look at Bed Bath & Beyond real quick. And let's look at it on the hourly chart. Give you... Well... Let's do the four hour just a little bit. So if you look at this Bed Bath & Beyond, these green squares represent when Ryan Cohen... Let me show you Ryan Cohen real quick. This is Ryan Cohen. He's founder of Chewy. And he's chairman at GameStop. 10 hours ago he tweeted, Short sellers are the dumb stormtroopers of the investing galaxy. March 8th, he sent a letter to BBBY board, got no response, sent email to CEO asking for a discussion, haven't gotten a prompt response, too busy talking to expensive consultant, question mark. But in my Discord, I mentioned that Ryan Cohen purchased over 9% of Bed Bath & Beyond. He also has options with a strike price of over $60 for January 2023. Ryan Cohen predicts that Bed Bath & Beyond may go above $60 per share. This is when he started acquiring even more shares. And then right here, this big candle. This is just from social media hype. And this isn't a lot of social media hype either. 63 million volume. That's not a lot. So this number could go up at least five times. And I do see how we could drive past $60 per share. This is Bed Bath & Beyond. I think Ryan Cohen is predicting that this company is going to squeeze if he can turn the company around and get the CEO of the company out of there and replace him with a better CEO. Some of the logic behind Bed Bath & Beyond is that they have this company. They have these products for babies. Well, they, already, they already did replace, I mean, not the CEO, but they, they got a whole new team and like for the digital unit. For yeah, but they don't. They didn't replace the board of uh, Bed Bath and Beyond. There are some new members. Let me see. Hold on. Let me um. Let me go to Discord real quick. Let's go over here. Uh, I do have this Bed Bath and Beyond tab. All right, here it goes. These are all the shares purchased. Purchase of letter. common stock 600. Google is reading it for me. All right, so right here. Ryan Cohen Ventures LLC. His voting power is over 9 million shares. That's a lot of voting power. He has power in the company now. Ryan Cohen has power in Bed Bath and Beyond. And he did a similar power play with GameStop. When he did it with GameStop, the stock price was $15 per share. And I think GameStop saw over $500 per share during the mini squeeze. Now, we still haven't even hit the main squeeze yet for GameStop. So, let that be a lesson. What do you think would happen to Bed Bath and Beyond if he gets even more power? And look, they do have a new uh, new chief of growth, and they also have a new uh, chief strategy position. And these are all for the digital section they have. And there are a few. Uh, I think one of the guys, Rafef Mous uh, Masood, is friends of Ryan Cohen, too. And he's going to be the current chief digital officer and interim chief brand officer. Right. And if the CEO of Bed Bath & Beyond wants to remain at the company, how is he going to get the voting power? Whose shares are, is he going to buy? I know Ryan Cohen is not going to sell his shares, not without a premium price tag. And that price tag would probably overpower the salary or compensation that CEO is receiving. Bed Bath & Beyond, that stock price has been driven to the floor by the current CEO. So Ryan Cohen coming in, changing up the company. And I don't know if you guys remember the stream a while back when we were talking about Bed Bath & Beyond. We were trash talking this stock 
to the floor. We were talking about the fundamentals, how the stores were failing across the United States. They were closing in the malls. They had to pack up and leave. They were bleeding cash. All this is possible to blame the CEO of the company. He's the only same factor that's been there for multiple times. Market has had steady growth while Bed Bath & Beyond has been declining. So Ryan Cohen coming in, buying these shares up. Could be good. Let's um let's check this real quick. And then he did write a letter to the board. He did buy some shares. And let me uh make this a little bit bigger. Basically, it says Bed Bath and Beyond. Dear members of the board, I write to you in my capacity as a manager of Ryan Cohen Ventures, LLC, which is a top five shareholder of Bed Bath & Beyond. With beneficial ownership of approximately 9.8% of the company's outstanding shares. This is a power play. He's, Ryan Cohen goes on to say, we have carefully assessed Bed Bath Assets balance sheet, corporate governance, executive compensation, existing strategy, and potential alternatives. While we like Bed Bass brand and capital allocation policy, we have concerns about leadership compensation relative to performance and its strategy for reigniting meaningful growth. Basically, the CEO, his tenure there up 20%, while the uh, total shareholder return for the 10 years down negative 69%. That's not fair compensation. Basically, Cohen says, Meanwhile, the company's named executive officers were collectively awarded nearly $36 million in compensation last fiscal year, a seemingly outsized sum for a retailer with a nearly $1.6 billion market capitalization. So if you, this is also important. It's a small cap company. 1.6 billion dollar let's go over here to my favorite website nomets.com <laughs> 1.6 billion dollar look at all these cryptocurrencies worth more than bed bath and beyond 1.6 billion dollar you would have to come all the way down to bit turn version 2 the number 63 crypto just to start finding cryptos that are worth less than bed bath and beyond now if ryan cohen can make this stock price go up by 10 times 10 times uh, 19, that's $190 per share. It would put it around $19 billion and would push it above uh, the top 10 cryptocurrencies. That's a nice spot if it's around $19 billion market cap, if he can do that for the company. But anyways, the officers are receiving too much compensation. $36 million is a large portion of $1.6 billion. Especially for the stock underperforming the S&P compared to the market, Bed Bath & Beyond is underperforming. So Ryan Cohen goes on, he describes his strategy, and I'll be making a video to go deeper into this with a lot more research. Basically my video is already over 30 minutes long, I have a lot of research. I, I kind of want to stay away from price prediction, I don't want to get into too much like Wall Street bets do with their format and their guessing. I just want to mention, though, that it is possible that he could turn the company around. Without a question, Ryan Cohen could turn Bed Bath & Beyond around. He did really well with Chewy. He did really well with GameStop. GameStop's still not over yet. He's still working really hard for GameStop. So that's something to consider with Bed Bath & Beyond. I already, already like the stock. I do think it could have room to dip. His options are for 2023. There could be some... I already know they're going to have really bad earnings as well. So there, There's plenty of room for the stock to dip before it does a rip and before it does a squeeze. If we look back here, let me show you something really important. Uh, what the... So I want to do something real quick. Sorry. Videos. 
sort by. This is who I got my inspiration from a little bit for the YouTube. His name's Roaring Kitty. His legal name is Keith Gill. And we go to some of his older videos. We can see that he starts talking about GameStop a little bit later. He, he did some of the live streams. They were not saved. But... We see like this video a year ago. 100% short interest ratio for GameStop. And then he mentions why GameStop is a roach, not a cigar. If I go on to this video... When he made this video on August 4th, 2020... GameStop shares was four dollar and one cents. Brian Cohen didn't come in and buy GameStop until after the price already did three hundred percent. To put that in perspective, we go further into his video, and he talks about all kinds of topics with GameStop. Their assets on hand. I remember their cash on the hand was almost worth more than the market cap of the stock. For example, that was a really big find for the treasure we go a little bit deeper he talks about some of the other youtubers as well he talks about at spots one he talks about gaming he talks about some of the fundamentals for the company and then we go back here that was a gamestop video live stream let's go down a little bit more he talks about the uh, big short squeeze from $5 to $50. Could GameStop explode higher? And basically GameStop was around $4.61 before it started even getting close to squeezing. Michael Berry started getting into GameStop. Uh, the... The stock was not $50 yet. It was around $5. He was predicting that it could squeeze to at least $50. Even when it hit $50, he did not take profits. Come back a little bit later. Here's a goat. Here's a goat video. Right here. And look how many people watch this video. Only 6,000 people watch this video. 6,000 people. And basically it says Ryan Cohen owns 9.6% of GameStop. Isn't that familiar? 9.6%? I mean... Ryan Cohen now owns uh, over 9% of Bed Bath & Beyond. It's almost as if history is repeating itself. And I'm not saying that Bed Bath & Beyond is going to do anything that GameStop did in terms of going up over 100 times in value. But Ryan Kitty was analyzing GameStop for many live streams and many videos and talking about some other stock tickers as well. But GameStop was one of the primary focus. And if you look at his YouTube chat as well, this guy named Jordan St. Pierre said, if GameStop was valued like Tesla on revenue... GameStop is a 10,000 times stock. These are polar opposites. Great to talk about on the stream. Can't do anything here on Tesla. All Elon loves. Sentiment matters. And um, speaking about Tesla, let's move on a little bit. Let's go down to Tesla because Tesla is looking pretty bad shape right now. We had this huge indecisive candle earlier. Uh, I posted about Tesla on the YouTube members as well. Let me um, get that real quick. I think it might not be members. I think it's anybody could view it. Yeah, anybody could view it. So This is what I wrote about Tesla earlier, four hours ago. I said, who else is bearish on Tesla? And if I click on this, the price was around $757 per share. We're up to 766. We had this huge indecisive candle on hourly. But Tesla, the reason why I'm short-term bearish is because of the fundamental analysis that Elon Musk is rising the price of Teslas because of inflation. 
If you check the news, Tesla is raising the price of their cars to counter inflation, and specifically nickel. So if we go to nickel price futures, look what happened to nickel right here. <laughs> September 21. From September 21 till now, it's increased dramatically. <laughs> so nickel is one of those key components for electric cars. And uh, there's always that bearish argument for electric cars that we're not going to have enough materials to make all the batteries for electric cars. Trading Economics says nickel prices stabilized around $48,000 per ton after briefly topping the $100,000 mark for the first time on record on March 8th and forcing the London Metal Exchange to halt trading until March 16th after the brokers were struggling to pay margin calls. As a result, the LME said it would cancel all nickel transactions that had taken place on March 8th and after restarting, trading will only happen in European hours and with a 10% daily limit on price moves. Western sanctions against Russia over its invasion of Ukraine sparks concerns over the metal supply. Russia accounts for about 10% of the global nickel supply, mainly for use in stainless steel and electric vehicle batteries. Nickel was already rallying before Russia's invasion of Ukraine as robust demand. So look, if you guys have any nickels laying around in your house, they've already increased in value significantly. So just want to remind you about that right there. Uh, I tried to mention it before, commodities. Commodities are some of the best ways to counter inflation. We can see that oil price is already coming back down a little bit. But stuff like nickel, wheat, they're still up there. These things are still up here. All right. So, going away from commodities for a few moments, is there anybody that has any questions? Yeah, nickels are worth more than dimes. Nickels are worth more than dimes. I had a guy in the Discord. I met him up in California. He showed me his coin collection. He probably had like over $200,000 worth of coins. And he would go around his neighborhood. He had a coin counter machine. He would bring like a few thousand dollars worth of cash. He would go door to door and pay people out cash for their coins. And this is how he accumulated all his silver quarters. All of his old nickels. All of his old coins. So that's one strategy people use to make money. Uh, a lot of old people have trouble taking their coins to the bank. Because one, they weigh so much. Uh, Juan Rosario says he thought about MULN as a short squeeze play. Let's take a look at MULN. Mullen Automotive. I don't know anything about the fundamentals of this stock, though. Nate Campbell has one nine dollar. Um, Maybe put it in GameStop option that costs a penny, Nate Campbell, and just yellow it all into that. So this is Mullen stock. What time is it? 10 o'clock. Um, Mullen about to get another double top. I feel like if it's mentioned a lot on Wall Street Bets, this is a part that scares me, right? We get this double top. Two dollars after being at fifty-four cents, we get rejected again at this double top. This stock's coming down, so let's let's go ahead and do some technical analysis. So let's go to unusualwells.com/social. Let's see what's trending. GameStop's trending. Spy's trending. Baba's trending. Baba was dipping really hard. Let's see what Twitter's saying about GameStop. 260 tweets in the last hour. Uh, I already replied to Carlos Trader about what happened. I feel like... Uh, 
Let's um look at the latest ones for GameStop. This guy says, what is a bull case for GameStop? Um, probably Metaverse play. Uh, ben DeLorean says, so Ryan Cohen of GameStop buys Bed Bath & Beyond. Now CEO Adam buys HYMC. Both heavily shorted stocks. Coincidence? I think not. <laughs> yeah, that's a good coincidence. All right, so let me um let's see. Does anybody on the Discord have anything they want me to research or look over real quick? Let me um put Tesla. Tesla's still trying to hold right here, though, $773. There is a bullish case that if they're charging more for their cars that they've already made on the cheap nickel, that could be huge profits. But it's going to be hard for them to make more cars in the future. So short-term could be a little bit bullish. Long-term could be a little bit bearish. And not only that, it seems like the U.S. are trying to push the transfer to electric vehicles and the high oil prices, that's accelerating the transfer too. Absolutely. Mm. HYMC. Let's look at HYMC a little bit. Um, sorry. Let me... Um, so this is HYMC. I'm using Unusual Wells software for tracking this. So the short, to short total volume ratio... Short about 60 million shares, total shares about 177 million. So, whew, about 34% of the shares are shorted for HYMC. That's a huge number. And then AMC comes out and buys some of this. Like, that's wild. <laughs> White Bots Advisors sold this stock at $1.13, 8 million shares. On March 8th. Six days later. Six days later, this stock rips. <laughs> yeah. Alright, so YouTube's saying Bitcoin dip. I know Bitcoin is dipping. Still keeping my crypto shorts open. Yeah, Bitcoin's under 39k right now. Bitcoin's still under 39k. If you look at these hourly candles... Not too much action right now. But it is possible Bitcoin does gain a thousand dollars volume per coin. Mm. If you guys want some entertainment, you can follow this Twitter account called Not Jerome Powell. It's a, it's a meme Twitter account. Nothing too serious. It's not associated with the Federal Reserve. It's financial parity and sarcasm control of the world's liquidity. Not investment advice. Um, For you guys who don't know, China has lockdowns as well. Let's look over the news real quick. And, um, let's use the NPR. They're a little bit unbiased. Shares in China fall amid strongest COVID-19 lockdown yet. And basically that's why I was a little bit more bearish on Alibaba stock. Sorry. If we look on the hourly, Alibaba's $74. And then I'm arguing with people last night when it's $79. <laughs> I mentioned uh, we could wick down. Like Alibaba could go down to at least $30 per share. It could lose half its value. Stocks in China fell sharply for a second consecutive day on Tuesday as the country faces its most aggressive lockdown yet. 
because they had over 3,400 cases. Hong Kong index fell 5.72%. And I promise you, I promise you, this stuff right here is going to make its way to American markets. This is going to disrupt our supply chain. Jerome Powell wants to come out and increase interest rates. So now we're going to have inflation from interest rates. Inflation is derived from disruptions in supply chain. Inflation is derived from the high oil prices. So we have to cut something out to make this economy work for investors. And which one do you think we're going to cut out? Possibly they might not raise inflation. They may try to open up more ports in America to help with the supply chain issue. But hey, if factories in China are not allowing workers to go to work among the lockdown, companies are not going to get their products. It's going to make its way to American stocks. We're Yeah, we're still in the bear market. We've been in the bear market, Hank Solman. We've been in the bear market. Like, I just, I'm just here to remind you, this is still the bear market. Yeah, I love crypto long term. I like to scout crypto. The thing about crypto, you can short it as well. So if you think the price is going down, you can borrow it and hedge against it. You can use isolated margin, limit your risk exposure. That's the beauty of crypto. Instant settlement for crypto. No wash sale rule for crypto. It's great. So... Yeah, we're we're officially in the bear market. If um, any of you guys have any questions, I'm here to help you. I just want to make sure that I can spread as much information as I can throughout the day. I'm not trying to spread FUD. I'm being honest. I'm being real. I'm not trying to shill anything to you guys. I just want to remind you guys of all the risk associated with trading. Let's go over to my favorite website again, nomets.com. Let's check the uh, daily change. Uh, ignore this old bit turn. That's like not really, that's nothing right there. Uh, we can see the Monero is up 5.26%. Monero was one of those popular coins that people wanted to start mining. It's a really popular coin. And basically what I like to look for on here are coins like Atom, Avalanche. Atom is a coin that you can trade on futures. Avalanche is, if you see it go up like 10% one day, you might want to start thinking about taking a short position. Tron. <laughs> Amp. Amp is a little bit wild for scalping. If you haven't scalped Amp, I recommend you try it. And... At SLM, that's pretty good for scalping as well. This is one of the coins that people like to buy to transfer money. If you send SLM to somebody, it's almost instantly, and the fee is super cheap. Look at Gala. Gala has their games. Let's go over Gala games real quick. I showed it yesterday. I want to show it again today. They have a Discord group. You can go to their website, app.galagames.com, and then... You can view more information. They do have the Gala nodes, so you receive rewards like Gala limited edition NFTs. If you learn more about this, you can get a Founders node. If you want to buy a Founders node, it's around 445,000 Gala. This is expensive. One gala is 21 cents. So if you're paying 21.5 cents per node and you're paying 445,153 gala, this node right here for gala costs $95,000. And it says license is required to operate a gala node. This is not financial advice as well. Yeah, this isn't financial advice. I'm just doing research. This is just entertainment and my documentation. If you guys do any of trades based off of my research, I highly encourage you to do your own research. 
here's what I like about Gala games. They have these play to earn games. Drifter was a developer of this one. That's pretty cool. The Walking Dead. Legends Reborn. They do have Spider Tanks. This one was pretty fun. You can already play it. Spider Tanks. Town Start is very popular. People can play even in the browser. Let me check something real quick. I'm going to log in my Gala games. All right, I'm just logging in real quick. I didn't want to show my information. All right. Sorry, so. I have to be very careful. I don't want to show too much. All right, I'm going to try to play this one real quick. I'm just loading it up. It's called Town Star. Uh, let's pick the one with the most people. I want to see if I can play it real quick. Let me do window capture. All right. This is. And then I'm going to do. Um... All right. So I'm going to play this real quick. Oh, I forgot my screen's too big. Sorry. It's going to look a little bit weird. Uh, I get to choose a spot that I want to build. Um, should I build near other people, probably? Close to other people and by the water. See, that's what I'm talking about. Oh, this guy got his old... He got an island right there? Oh, right... Uh, probably if it's anything like other games, you want to be like, oh, what is this? What if I build beside this stranger? Oh, who's, is he a good guy? 110, 100. Let's, uh, place my town here. Uh, what should I name my town? Any ideas for the name? Let's call it uh, Rocket Island. All right, let's go. Sweet potato, sweet potato island. Oh boy. <laughs> All right, so I'm gonna tap on the, is this a boat? It says tap on a boat to make a sail. I'm pretty sure the arrow is pointing at uh, something that's not a boat though. I want to play tap the boat to make a cell. Am I doing this wrong? <laughs> I think this is a boat. All right. I don't want to sell my pier. All right, so let's see what I have to sell. You need 10 bucket of wheat to load the truck. Do I have to sell? Oh, tap the boat to make a sell. It should say tap the dock to make a sell. Alright, so it's going to plan a route. I guess the nearest people are really far away. So pick an empty spot to activate the store. Build your and grow your own town and shop. All right. So this is my store down here. Hmm. How much money do I have? Twenty four thousand.
If I want to make money, I can get a lumberjack house. But for the lumberjack house, I probably need some trees. Let's see. I don't need to store anything yet, probably. How about I do the lumberjack house? Oh. And now I'm earning $50 per minute. Is the lumberjack going to cut down all these trees? Yeah, and he'll keep cutting too, even if you're out of uh, space to hold it. Alright, and um, for the lumberjack house, let's go over here. Keep selling goods and make your way to the top. Rocket Island. Like, what game is this? Gala Games. Uh... Townstar. 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 Okay. You get that on the desktop? Yeah. Yep. Uh, it's Sweet. browser, also. Alright. I played that, you know, a few times. I couldn't get past the point where you run out of gas to sell your stuff. Really? Yeah, yeah, you, you run out of gas eventually. Um, I think you have to get to the point of production of your own gas. Or buy it from other players, but that's kind of expensive. You must have Gala Power and NFTs to be eligible for earnings. Get Gala Power by holding Gala or Town Coin in your Gala wallet. Okay. So for this challenge, the sheep can't sleep. But basically, I have to get the uh, Gala in my wallet and stuff. But I see where you're coming from. So if I need to produce gasoline, let's see. It's actually pretty strategic once you get close to running out of money and gas. Yeah. Let's see. What's over here? What is this? Woodshed. Tin wood? So my silo is almost full. Builder house is 20 per minute. Gasoline, 30 sits left. How do you make gasoline? Yeah, that was the point I could never make it past. <laughs> Did you make a wind pump or a windmill? No, sir. I was just kind of trying them all the games out. Really didn't spend too much time. I'm not really a gamer. Oh, okay. Alright, so you can get the NFTs as well. Barnbot coming soon. And then you can get the NFTs. Oh, I don't want to secure my account, but this is Gala. Let's uh, transfer this, fit the screen. I just wanted to give a little bit of illustration of the game. I don't want to play it all day. Let's see what this... Uh, put my chart down here. Do this. But yeah, that's Gala Games. Um, definitely should... I should find a tutorial on the game. I think they're working on coming out with an app for Townstar. Yeah. I think you get bonuses and stuff for holding NFTs. Yeah, and some of them are pretty dang expensive. But oh, they yeah. have huge uses for the for the end game. Right. Alright, so my ship came back.
Make money as fast as you can to reach gasoline production. That's that's the trick. So if you make more money, you can make gasoline. All right. So basically, I gotta make this windmill. That will increase. If I go over here. Wheat is all right. Go over to industrial. It's worth researching though. I will get, if this windmill comes up, I can start making flour as well. And then I just need to build the, where's it at? Or you have wheat. So they're gonna put wheat in here. They're gonna put wood in here. I'm gonna make flour. That will increase my money. What's the other thing that will increase my money? Uh, all right. Peppermint. So this is animal feed. I would trial. And if I go right here. The tree is gonna grow right there. Basically I have to use this wood because it's gonna fill up anyway. The game does seem pretty cool though. I may play it in my free time. I do want to spend all my money. Does it do you earn money while you're offline? Like if I come back while I come back with a bunch of money? Uh, I think you manually manually have to sell unless you upgrade your marketplace. Um, but you'll keep collecting stuff while you're gone, but you'd have to log in to sell. Okay. Bitcoin getting a little pumpernickel. Yeah. Let's yeah. check it out real quick. Oh, yeah. Yep, it shot up past uh, 39.1k again. Bitcoin did shoot up. That's interesting. That's what I mentioned earlier. If you're not already well cushioned, probably don't want to start a short because you could face liquidations. It's a reality. <laughs> yeah, you guys think it's funny what Elon did on Twitter challenging Putin? Let's go to Elon. I don't know. He's kind of playing with fire. I don't know. <laughs> it's funny you say that in the first image I see. He's got a flamethrower. <laughs> For real? <laughs> <laughs> uh, Elon says... Elon says he can even bring his bear. <laughs> and um, Flick's risk. We should form a book club. <laughs> Maybe. Oh, that's hilarious. Oh, so Elon changed his profile pic. Did you see that? Yeah. <laughs> what do you think about that jawline? He's trying to look tough. Very American jawline, right? Hmm. 
hilarious. You guys notice Elon hasn't really been tweeting about Doge lately since we've been in this big downturn. Yeah, he wants that cheap Doge. <laughs> That's a greedy little bastard. Netflix waiting for the war to end to make a movie about a black Ukraine guy falls in love with a transgender Russian soldier. <laughs> That's going to be a wild Netflix movie. I'm not going to lie. I don't have Netflix. I don't have Netflix. Netflix isn't worth the time. If you're not watching the charts, you're wasting your time. Yep. Amen to that. You can put the charts on your TV. Much more exciting, too. What well, depending when. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. I was going to say, have you seen it before in FOMC, man? FOMC? I've seen it. I know what you're talking about. That's the stock yeah. where Joe Biden brought the uh, CEO. No, not that one. <laughs> Are you talking about crypto or stock? No, uh, no, no. I was just... Damn, pissed off. Have you seen the uh, markets before in FOMC? They're usually flat. Mm, yeah. Super flat. Well, let's see. Today, the FOMC starts, so... There's a crypto called Arker. It's related to a game as well. But, man, they started getting a pump up last hourly. It's actually a big pump, if you ask me. Like, that was a fat hourly candle for Arker. Uh, definitely not related to Tame the Ark. I am not the founder of this coin. That spiked up to 0 0.0051. If we go to Nomics, we can check out who owns Arker. Some cool coin. Basically, they they have this game. Let me um. You can play playarker.com. You can play now. It's a it's a beta version though, so it's not out yet. The first to play to earn RPG. To so play to earn RPG. It looks like garbage. <laughs> And it's, it looks like garbage. But, hey, maybe people will buy the coin to play the game. Some people want to get into the play-to-earn games no matter how bad they look. I think I'm going to jump in an XYO position here. Might be a little risky, but I'm kind of liking this setup for now. Just a short scalp. What setup? It looks very bearish, buddy. For a quick scalp, I'm thinking uh, this is going to hold right here above 1624 because I still see a little bit of support under us. And I think Bitcoin is just testing what it was as resistance right now. Looks like it's testing a little bit of support on this like five minute. Why do you scalp something with very little volume? Because I like to give it momentum myself. I like to be the catalyst. Like right now, three, two, one, burn. Oh, uh, on Coinbase? Yeah, yeah, I saw it wick up a little bit, but it did dip down right before it wicked up. You use Coinbase Pro, right? Yep. So you see how I tried to, I broke that little resistance, previous resistance with that wick? Yes. But the volume, that volume is only 170,000. Jesus Christ. Really? That's literally only a thousand dollar. That's not a thousand dollar. For this can like two thousand dollars can move this candle on the one yeah, on the one minute chart. Dollar order right there. What? That was much more than a two thousand dollar order. I know, but I'm just looking at this chart on coin regular Coinbase. On a one minute chart, two thousand dollars can make a fat candle like this. That well, it depends. What, yeah, it depends what's on the uh, sell side right now. No, like this thing's under two cents. 
Yeah, but it, it, that doesn't matter. It matters what's on the order book. That's If there's a lot of orders on the south side, you're not going to be able to move the candle. But if it's thinned out, right now it's pretty thinned out. Oh, it's thinned out. Yeah, there's... Yeah. But if you zoom out on the daily for XYO, hmm. I think it's even lower than when it first came out, almost. Almost. Yeah. Oh yeah, it's lower than when it first came out. We did cross the oversold range, bounced up, so maybe we can go down to a deeper oversold range for SYO. There's going to be some news coming out because Coinbase will be staking XYO, and I think I just want to make sure I'm in before that, so I'm going to keep on playing some scalps. But you know, if Bitcoin drops, I'm going to get out real quick too. Yeah, this thing's in a big downtrend on a daily. Anna. Risky, risky. <laughs> Let me um let's look at Jupiter. <laughs> this is Jupiter coin. The chart doesn't look that scary. It actually had a recent pump. If you're in their Discord, like you would know when these pumps are gonna happen. But Jupiter is already coming back down. Jupiter is under two cents again. I'd rather go into something like Jupiter than Jasmine. Like this weekly chart for Jupiter. Let me uh, take off this face that I drew. This is Jupiter's chart. It does these nice downtrends, but when it gets oversold, that's when we start spiking up on the weekly. People in the Discord were beating themselves up for not buying it when it went under a penny before. So, I guarantee if it goes under a penny before, it's going to get a lot of buy pressure for Jupiter. It's on KuCoin. So, Tane, you see how I was able to initiate somebody else jumped on right after me? Uh, I closed it. Let me go back. What platform? Coinbase? Coinbase Pro, yeah. Um, so right now, I could take a nice profit if I want, but I'm just going to hold tight. Oh, I missed the profit. But I was holding up at 1655 for a sec. Well, if you're the one that's initiating it, how are you going to take profit unless uh, other people jump in? Well, that's somebody did jump in on top, and that's what I was showing you. Yeah, I'm watching was, it. Yeah, so I was in my week went up to like 1646, and then somebody jumped up and whipped it to 1655. So I could have took profit at 1655 if I wanted to. I don't know why I'm on the euro. Why why do I have euro? Come on. What? Alright, so on KuCoin, let's just use KuCoin for this one. Can you can you use it on leverage trading on KuCoin? I don't know. The price is now as high as one point six four six cents. Do you have a take profit somewhere? Right now I'm looking at the area of 1675, but I'm not definitely taking profit there. If I see momentum, I'm probably going to hold till once. Uh, hold on. Looking at this hourly. Look at the uh, 1648. That's a lot of resistance. 1648 is a ton of resistance. Yeah, we're already above it here on Coinbase Pro. Yeah, we're not there yet on KuCoin though. And if we're not there yet on KuCoin, the problem is people can just transfer it and then sell it on Coinbase. Yeah, it tends to happen a lot. You better keep an eye on transactions. Check these scans. Someone asked me, do you think Cardano at 79 cents is a good to buy for the long term? I really don't like Cardano's project. I really don't like their project at the end of the day. I'm not a fan either. Especially the people that are in charge of it, not a fan. Really dislike Cardano. Short could pump up 
but I would pick a lot. I would probably pick like 12 different cryptocurrencies over Cardano. All right, Richard Hart tweeted. Let's see what he's doing. Good morning, Richard. One minute ago, his YouTube is back up. He's not banned on YouTube anymore. Great news. He's only got 127,000 subscribers. There's so much room for Hets and the Pulse Chain to go up. Yeah, Richard called out when they were canceling nickel trades as well. I'm about to make a nickel NFT. But yeah, 88, Cardano. Mm -hmm. I'm not feeling it. We had the Def Cross coming in like around $2.15. It's down a lot since that Def Cross. Let's look at Big Daddy Ethereum. Actually, Ethereum didn't do just a straight downtrend, which was good. It kind of wicked down and then curved back up. So that was good for ETH. ETH doing those big pumps. Hey, good morning. What's going on? Hey, we're gonna go. We're going over to market currently. Um, if you look at ETH, though, like when we're in spots like this, I don't make a trade. I literally could not make a trade on this unless I wanted to uh, dollar cost average down. And if that's the case, I would wait for the price to go lower. We did have that cup and handle on the. Daily chart fill. That's why ETH did spike up to three dollars twenty cents. Or uh, the uh, other cup and handle never filled. It failed, hence the downtrend. Uh, let me zoom in so you guys can see that illustration a little bit better. Cup and handle success. Boom, got a pump. Cup and handle fell. Get a dip, <laughs> and it's still room for ETH to do a downtrend. It is trying to form a handle of a hammer right here maybe if this hammer fills and the wicks a little bit better could be a reversal we do have this nice strong reversal candle right here as well usually when you see candles like this it indicates that the stock or crypto may be set for a reversal and that is what happened after and then people took profit on daily at just around 65 rsi but overall eth it started dipping pretty bad when vitalik Buterin came out and mentioned that 2.0 could take anywhere from five years to six years to be fully developed which is why i like pulse chain this will be out in months compared to eth 2.0 and basically what pulse chain is going to have it's going to have all the copies of erc 20s on their network and it's going to be a swap PulseX is going to be liquidity on the swap. It's going to be a direct competitor to Uniswap. The fees are going to be really cheap. Regular HETS is going to be known as eHETS on their network because it's on the Ethereum network. And then Pulse Chain HETS is going to be PHETS. And basically what this will give people the option to do, you'll be able to buy some PHETS, really cheap gas fees, because right now if you want to buy HETS, you're paying like $150 for a gas fee regardless. But with this, you're paying anywhere from one cent to under a dollar. So gas fees just got a lot cheaper for people to buy stuff like cats. So it allows more small scale investors to get into pets. Let's, uh, let's go over to Dogecoin real quick. And I want to look at it on the one second chart. And if I look on one second, I can slowly see like it's trying to make its way up. And we can see these volume spikes about 1 million Doge. Doge, not enough volume for this. Let's, um, let's do Bitcoin, it has a little bit more volume. Uh, 
I'll be right back in a minute. I have to uh, use the restroom, but I'll leave this Bitcoin real quick. Okay, I'm back, and we still see Bitcoin climbing, still above 39k. It's up there. Oh, there goes the death cross on the one second chart. Let's see if she comes back down based off of this one second chart. Yep. After we got this death cross on one second, Bitcoin started coming right back down. <laughs> nice sell indicator right there. Boy, oh boy. Oh, it became completely oversold on one second though, so maybe some buy pressure is going to come back in and pump it up. Right here. Usually when you get oversold, it starts pumping back up again. Maybe it will pump back up to a higher than 39.175. Nope. Sell signal came in. We're going to revisit, cool down a little bit further. All right, so let's go to one hour. One of my viewers, all right, so I'll show you my settings for my def cross, well, my golden cross indicator. For this one, my fast MA period's 13, my slow MA period's 49. You, you can change it up. You can do 5200. Um, 
Let's see real quick. Let's look at the four hour chart for Bitcoin just real quick. I want to check the VWAP. We're getting near the top of this VWAP up here for Bitcoin. Like if we touch around 39.3, we're either going to get rejection or staircase upwards. And if we're in a bearish market, probably going to get a little bit of rejection, honestly. Just a little bit of rejection. Good work. Look over at Pulse Chain. Tesla. Tesla's also doing pretty well. $790 per share right now. Tesla's doing really well. Wow. Look at Tesla. It's up there. Almost $800. It, it went up there close. Let's look at Bed Bath & Beyond. Bed Bath & Beyond looked up to above $20 per share. All right, so I'm going to save this image for one of my viewers. Here you go, Kitty Slayer. I hope this image helps you all. Boy, oh boy. Get you a nice illustration. Basically, when the 50-day moving average crosses above the 20-day, 200-day moving average, you'll get a golden cross. And then if you just do the inverse, you'll get the death cross. I hope that illustration helps you. Uh, Bed Bath & Beyond is coming down a little bit, but I'm not worried about this. I'm not going to scalp this on the micro, especially with Ryan Cohen having options at $60 strike price. Definitely not going to worry. All right. Anybody have any questions about any thoughts, any cryptocurrencies? Let me open this image as well for my, um, just show YouTube real quick. Basically, a uh, golden cross, you get the 50 day moving average. It crosses above the 200 day moving average. And when that happens, usually at a point like this, you start seeing a spike up. Sometimes though, sometimes you'll get a golden cross, death cross, golden cross, death cross on the same line. Usually with something like Bitcoin. Look at the hourly. Bitcoin's near the top of this hourly candle. My only fear is we have a new hourly coming in about five minutes and we had this take profit signal on the five minutes. Uh, I do feel like Bitcoin's going to come down. Bitcoin has room to come back down. It had the take profit when we hit 39.18. And if you look at that price right there, let me show you why. Boom. Like, te not technically double top, but almost. And it was uh, near a bearish candle as well. So, on five minutes. It started becoming overbought, over 84 RSI, so Bitcoin had to cool down a little bit right here. Look at the VWAP. We're, we start getting closer to the top of the VWAP range as well. On this five minute, I feel like we have a little bit more room to come down. We have that hourly candle coming in as well. This does look good for the hourly, but sometimes what you may notice with Bitcoin... The next hourly candle is going to fill back down, back down towards 38.67. And that's one of the fears of crypto. All right. 
I just want to watch this Bitcoin. We got about three minutes. I want to see if the candle starts filling back down because we notice that sometimes. If it doesn't keep filling back down, then we may get a bigger candle for the hourly. But it's really hard since we're in market open. We're just hitting lunchtime right now as well. Volume may start falling off. While we're waiting on that, let's check the SPY. SPY is around 421. It did pump up to around 422.82. It's coming back down as well. This is the SPY. Let's hit the NASDAQ. NASDAQ also has that same pattern curving back down. And uh, Bitcoin's getting the sell signal as well. I feel like it's going to dip. The NASDAQ is uh, trying to recover from this curve, but after that run up, a couple dollars, I feel like it could dip a little bit more. Sorry, I keep losing the uh, YouTube chat. There it goes. What's up, Under Armour Marketing? How are you doing, Pete? Uh, not really any more news on Starlink and Doge Rocket, but that would be a great catalyst for crypto. Let me see. Um, I guess let's do Bitcoin up here. Bitcoin. So, we're going to check out and see if Bitcoin is going to fill this hourly candle going back down. Or we're going to get a higher hourly candle. Our site is looking bullish. It is heading up. It does have more gas in the tank on the hourly, on the daily. But... We are getting in that overbought range. A wick up double top and then fill back down. We could be looking at around 38.7k Bitcoin again. Mr. Dino says, Tame, thoughts on Shiba Inu? Well, Shiba Inu is also another coin that I don't like to short because if they update SHIB or they have new catalyst for ships and the price could eventually go up 300 percent so ship has room to do these big eight to ten percent pumps it moves pretty fast relatively fast we are in this new hourly candle let's take a look on the five minute chart this is bitcoin and if we look here on the five minute chart we were already overbought right before we came into this hourly candle which is pretty bad position to go long if you're doing it, you're doing it based off of emotion, probably. I think you under armor. I may check that out. We are looking at Bitcoin. New hourly candles rolling in here. And we were overbought on the five minute chart, five minute time frame, after a small staircase up. It is lunchtime as well. So I feel like volume is going to fall off. And if volume falls off, we're going to lose that buy pressure momentum. And Bitcoin is going to make its way back down. Not the best, not the best situation to be in. Not the best situation. Yeah, we already see Bitcoin's coming back down a little bit. A lot of people have to be careful longing it at the top of those hourly candles when we're in the overbought range. NASDAQ is trying to move up a little bit more. Let's see here. Let me check something real quick on Nomics. Let's we'll see. Yeah, not not nothing really moved a lot, like a large percentage. So a lot of these things are still like consolidating. A lot of these prices are still consolidating. If you look over here on Nomics, 
look at the uh, daily change besides the BitTorrent version 1 old BTT. After GRT, nothing really moving a lot that you can trade on futures. Like these are very small gains, small steady gains. Look at Bitcoin. We just got the sell signal roll out on the five minute as well. So this heavy take profit symbol, I really love to trade with this. If I see this, if I see that, I take profit. That that really means take profit, get out. So definitely take profit and then let things cool down before getting into another position. Eventually, I think Jasmine will go under one penny tone. Yes, eventually. But this is Bitcoin. Bitcoin's coming back down. Starting to see it coming back down, which is very brutal. But like I said, we are in a bear market. We're in a bear market, and we're going to have stuff like this happen. If you have any questions, feel free to shout them out in the chat. Mm -hmm. Let me uh, do something real quick. I'm going to log in the Nightbot real quick. I'm going to do a quick giveaway. Yeah. Make sure I'm logging in the correct account. My bad. Let me uh, set this up just really quickly. So I'm going to give a giveaway real quick. Mm -hmm. Let me show you what I'm giving away. So I'll be giving away a few of these uh, bronze level supporter crowns. Currently I give away over 113. There's now 114 owners. 3,333 total. And to enter the giveaway, let's go to Nightbot. Um... And all you have to do is type BBBY to be entered in the giveaway. Type the word BBBY and you'll be entered in the giveaway. I'm going to go ahead and roll it for the first person. RC Anderson, you won the giveaway the first one. So all you have to do is post your MetaMask wallet. If you don't know how to get your MetaMask wallet, go to OpenSea.io. Go to your profile. First, you're going to connect your MetaMask. Once you're logged in your MetaMask, you're going to click MetaMask here. And then this will be your address. You just copy this address and then paste it in YouTube chat, RC Anderson. And I'm going to look at some charts while I'm waiting on RC to post his address, and then we'll do another giveaway. It does appear Bitcoin's trying to bounce back up on the five minutes. So that's pretty good. It did cool off enough right there, 54 RSI. Turning bullish again, but... Like I said, we're very early on. Make sure you type BBBY if you want to be entered in the giveaway. And uh, congratulations, R.C. Anderson. Congratulations on winning that NFT. If you guys have any uh, suggestions for what to watch currently, I'm very open to some suggestions. I want to look at NVIDIA stock real quick. NVIDIA's, NVIDIA is pumping on the uh, five minutes. NVIDIA was staircasing up along this uh, VWAP. 
It was uh, 214 now we're at $225 per share. NVIDIA is up there. If we look at this hourly chart, NVIDIA had a big pump up. Big pump up for NVIDIA. It was it just barely touched the oversold range too before this happened, so Ooh. NVIDIA is looking good. Let's look at NVIDIA on the daily though. After they did their stock split, that's when the stock started gaining a lot of value. But it's now it's retracing to almost those pre-stock split levels. Uh, Doge could hit eight cents, Kyle. And uh let me check the giveaway bot. See, RC still didn't post his address, so I'll wait a little bit longer. And video still has room to run. They're still number one in their field for the graphic cards. All right, Hank, I'll look at Sandbox. And um, let's use KuCoin. Sandbox has been in this downward trend. Yeah, Soundbox has been downward trend ever since it went past $8.48. And it already came back down to $2. On the daily, this looks very scary. Bear markets right now, Roger. We're, we've been in a bear market for a while. Even since November, have been in a, like a big bearish trend. Let's we'll see. I can touch it just a little bit more and then if if we break this triangle sandbox is gonna go down a little bit more but the thing is I think we might cross into the oversold range for sandbox and if I go to nomits.com sandbox does have some catalysts there are more NFT projects working with them Uh, so I think the website not working for Sandbox game through directly from Nomic, so I had to type it in manually. Mm, on March 31st, they're going to do the raffle day season end. So this may be a catalyst for Sandbox Alpha Season 2 right now. People can play the alpha for sandbox right now. They're they're constantly getting new partners. It's a great NFT platform to build NFTs if you're new to the NFT space. And if you'd like to design. Alright, RC Anderson, you sent me your address. Uh put your address in the chat. And then I'm going to clip it from the uh, bot. After I clip it from the bot, I'll send you that NFT. But Sandbox is in this downward trend. It did become overvalued at $8 per. It just wasn't worth $8 per Sandbox. A lot of people wanted to get in that first beta. They already got into the hype. Apparently, less people wanted to get into the second beta, so a little bit of hype fall off for Sandbox. Let's see. We can go to Twitter as well. <laughs> Sanders comes up. Maybe a lot of scammers trying to give away the NFTs as well. Let me go back to nomits.com real quick though. Let me go to their official Twitter account. All right. 11 minutes ago they tweeted, Day number nine, hey Sam people, do you like mushrooms? Find the mushroom dragon in the fun guys and take a selfie. Enter here. Okay, so they do have a nice little competition started 11 minutes ago. That could be a little bit bullish for Sandbox on the short-term time frame. Let's see if the one-minute chart has already reacted to that tweet. 
Ten bucks is up a little bit from two sixty eight to two seventy, and then spike up to two seventy one. So maybe this is a short term catalyst for the crypto to become a little bit bullish. I haven't looked at loop ring lately, Nate Campbell. We can look at loop ring though. Let's look at it on the Binance chart. Yeah, the one minute is pumping. We were oversold, oversold price around sixty five point nine. Now we're in the overbought range. At around 67. Oh. <laughs> Woo. <laughs> Woo. And we were overbought. <laughs> wow. <laughs> Woo. <laughs> okay. There goes the death cross. <laughs> That's what happens when you get overbought. <laughs> Somebody literally dumped 4 million loop ring right there <laughs> oh my that was the fattest candle oh my god ah. oh my god let me um let me try to clip that real quick is this loop ring i can't even see All right. <laughs> I'm going to clip that one real quick. That was funny. But yeah, we see it. Like if something becomes overbought, you're going to see a dip. And uh, that's what happened. It played it like butter right there. That's a fatty. We saw another candle similar like that uh, over on the uh, 15th of March. So there's another candle. Usually it climbs back up a little bit, but man, that's dirty for what happened with loop ring right there. But yeah. Let's see how Bitcoin's handling. Not too bad, actually. Not too bad. It's uh, but it has trouble getting that double top. And if it wants to get double top on this and hold, I mean, we get we have so much rejection at this point that it has to break through. <laughs> YouTube chat says, "Please give Bitcoin a coin, a candle like that." That was hilarious. That might be worth the uh, adding to TikTok. At around 67. <laughs> That's hilarious. Let me add this to announcements channel real quick. That one's funny. Uh, maybe I'll put this one in memes channel. The thing we're just double topping right here, Bitcoin. Look on the hourly though for Bitcoin. All right, so I'm gonna look at App App. Uh, is it a crypto or stock dark poppy? Let me look at the stock first. App Lovin Corporation. Oh, it's been in this downturn on the hourly. On uh, the weekly, this thing looks super bearish. It's a stock called App. It was one hundred and fifteen dollars at the peak in November, and when the markets, when people started buying a bunch of puts, this stock came down eventually right now to forty five dollars. So it lost over half its value. It's completely oversold on the technicals. I don't know the fundamentals behind App stock though. Let me check what Twitter says. I want to learn. Um, let's see what App Lovin says. 
one of the world's largest creative platforms. Um, is that all? They don't have that many followers on social media as well. They are pleased to announce App Lovin has been named a finalist in the best advertising. Okay. I don't know. Their stock seems to be dipping a lot. Seems like they're focusing a lot of their attention on empowering women in technology, social field. But does anyone have a referral code for Gala Games? I'll give you my referral code. I don't. All right. Let me uh, give you my referral code right now. I don't even know how to get the referral code. <laughs> uh, is there a referral code for Gala Games? Oh, I copy referral code. All right. I will put it in the referral links channel. QRS. All right, there Sorry, buddy, I wasn't... What'd you say? I put it in the referral codes channel for Gala Games. Okay. Appreciate it. I'll, I'll put my referral code in the YouTube chat as well. Right, Hank, well. Hank, we've been in the bear market for like um, since November, technically. So November, December, January, February, March. We've been in the bear market over five months. People that's been shorting since November are... Very big in profits. So yeah, I just got one of my friends to sign up on Gala Games. So I get that referral credit. You guys are welcome. Alright, so somebody just tagged me on Twitter. They said the the Wall Street Journal is reporting that Saudi Arabia is considering accepting yuan instead of dollars for Chinese oil sales. <laughs> of course, in my comments, why are they not trading Bitcoin? Inflation. Ah, ah. That's hilarious. All right, so let's get off of this. Let's go back. Let's go look at Luna real quick. One second. All right, I'm back. All right, let's see. Luna's up here at the top of the hourly candle. It's kind of pumping a little bit. Looking pretty good. Hmm. Luna does these pumps sometimes, so we get a little bit oversold, then it wants to pump up. It doesn't have to be a lot oversold. And this is Luna. Luna. It's a nice chart, honestly, for scalping. Be very careful of future shooting. Uh, someone wants me to look at KNC. Let's look at it on Binance. We'll look at it on the eight. Let's just do four hour. I see a lot of double top on the four hour. Like, um, boom, boom, boom. 
So, yeah, we're getting these double tops. Definitely had some rejection here at $3.16. We're holding above $3 right now, $3.09. So. Let's um, look into the five minute chart. Yeah, after it got those rejections at double top for KNC, it is kind of a little bit expected that after you hit those double tops or multiple tops, three, four tops, and get rejected, the price is going to start coming back down. And that's what we're witnessing with KNC. It's a cryptocurrency right now. All right. Bitcoin's still making its way down as well a little bit. Bitcoin's still like, I mean, it's it's holding, but slowly, slowly making its way down on the five minute candle. If you look on the one minute chart, you can see it was slowly staircasing up. It may lose that bullish momentum, but it, it can pick up bullish momentum again. We've seen Bitcoin do some major dips before and then pick up a lot of bullish momentum. So that is something to consider. Alright. So, yeah, we witnessed KNC get that but, rejection. What's up, buddy? But we won't do it. We don't want it to, though. Well, well, ideally, we do want it to dip a little bit harder if we're shorting. I mean, in general, yes, I'm shorting and I'm a little biased, but it needs to dip more before we can continue back to the ballroom, right? All right. Yeah, I just think we just need to come down more regardless whether we're shorting or not before oh, yeah. we can continue back to the bull run. I mean, you need to pull back before the bull run. You need to cool off, and I think the next big bull run in 2024, about two years from now. About two years from now. Hey, Tim. Hey, what's up? What's up, man? Tim, have you done any, any research on Engine Coin or um, Ultra? I haven't researched Engine in a while. I know it's a gaming token, but I don't know if it kept up the use. Let me check their chart real quick. Uh, the price seems to be pumping on the five minutes. Some of these gaming tokens have similar pattern. It's a nice chart for scalping. But if you look at engine on daily, you notice that same pattern. It's that big downturn since $4, and now we're well under a $2 mark. But it is kind of like accumulating here. It's accumulating, but not on the uh, oversold range. Do you know about any updates for Engine? No, I, I don't know any updates for Engine, but considering everything else that has been pumping around, and this hasn't dipped as much as the rest of the gaming coins. Some of the gaming coins have dipped like 80%, 90%. So I was thinking if this is a good deal to cut in at this point, possibly tomorrow after the after the news, uh, maybe a good entry point. So I was thinking about that. What? Is this their real Twitter account? <laughs> oh. All right. So they did have a tweet on March 11th talking about the metaverse is live on Polkadot after years of intensive research and development. Affinity has launched a historic milestone for the engine community. So about four days ago, they had a milestone. So. 
that's good for engine and we check the daily one two three four the price is still like lower than four days ago after that milestone being achieved and crypto blade says new partnerships at engine crypto blades partners with engine as they launch Affinity. I, I don't know if this is good or bad but it's on the polka.network network and then crypto blades is a game that will play on it so that's interesting engine says we're hiring welcome crypto blades well played crypto to the engine and Affinity ecosystem oh it looks like an interesting game i might have to play this one it is i mean in general the gaming coins all of the gaming coins are on a downtrend because of the larger downtrend but i think uh there was good option for engine especially around september when it picked up it picked up really really good so it hasn't really picked up to the highest levels it should have so i'm just thinking that that's a good option to get in possibly around one dollar i would i would be happy to get in around one dollar 80 cents somewhere around that is it possible that the coins were expensive when they came out because people wanted to get in the games early and get better equipment better gear and after they had that better gear, they didn't care about the coins as much and they could sell them to the floor. Yeah, I mean, very much that could be the case. I mean, I think, especially for the other ones like uh, Wilder World and all the other ones that are are portraying that at least they have a lot of development done, you, you don't see the end product as of now. I mean, the end product is possibly six months to one year down the line. So it's all in speculation that all of the a lot of these coins are getting bought. Let's look at Ethereum. Uh, someone say Ethereum's killing it right now, but I definitely don't see it as much. In five minutes, it's a slow pump. After we had that take profit sign for ETH, it's still climbing a little bit though. Oh, it's still under two thousand six hundred. It's like a fifty dollar gain from uh, earlier this morning. What's up, YouTube? So, quick recap for you guys that don't know. AMC bought a gold mining company. It's called Highcroft Mining Holdings. Let's take a look at that stock ticker. It's called Highcroft. It's a stock. HYMC is a stock ticker. After they bought it news came out the stock price pumped up to like almost three dollars is that two dollar 97 cents and it's already started retracing back down this is a five minute chalk stock chart of hymc and this is a stock that amc put a lot of money into what's up youtube and l i call owens how's it going All right, so I'm watching Bitcoin again. Bitcoin is still dipping a little bit. Let me get a movement real quick. Um, what are these options that I want to look at? I want to look at a BBBY. And then for the options, I want to check the options that expire 2023, January. And I want to look at the $60. Uh, I want to look at calls. Strike price of $60. Ooh, these are up. Let me pull this up as well for you guys to see. I'm using Mumu, so I'm going to full screen this. So these are some of the options for Bed Bath & Beyond for January 1st, 2023. $70 strike price. The price of this option is $2.55. It's already increased by 18.6%. People are trading these options. People people think that Bed Bath and Beyond would ultimately hit sixty dollars, 
by 2023. Yeah, you guys can make that NFT your profile picture. Uh, all right, so I got RC Anderson's uh, address. I'm going to send him the NFT real quick. Just look at those options. Tim, why do you think if Bed Bath & Beyond could be a $60 game? Why? Yeah. What, what's the catalyst? Ryan Cohen owns over 9% of the shares. If um, somebody wants to buy those shares, he doesn't have to sell them for under 60 and then his options would be worth more significantly. All right, R.C. Anderson, I sent you that NFT. I sent your NFT to you, R.C. Anderson. Got it. Uh, everybody that typed BBBY, I'm going to roll the dice again. BBBY for Bed Bath & Beyond. Thien Chu, you are the winner. I just need your MetaMask wallet. All right. You are the winner, Thien Chu. Congratulations. After you send that wallet address, I'll send your NFT. But until then, let's talk a little bit about Bed Bath & Beyond. Basically, Ryan Cohen did the same thing with GameStop, but he bought it when it was $15 per share. And then the squeeze went all the way up to $500 per share. And basically, it's a power play to get the CEO out of the company. If CEO wants to override Ryan, he's going to have to buy more shares. To buy more shares is going to drive up the price. Also, Bed Bath & Beyond is almost like 40% shorted. So 40% of, of the shares are shorted. And Ryan Cohen owns 9% of the shares. They're going to have some trouble finding shares at a cheap price pay back once that price goes up above $30 and they get liquidate it's going to drive the price all the way to $60 with ease now I don't think Ryan thinks his stock's going to go to 60 he probably thinks it's going to go to 80 or $100 per share so that when he does redeem his options it's going to be worth more significantly it's not going to show in your MetaMask RC Anderson so you're going to go to your profile. You're going to click hidden. It's not this NFT, but there's going to be one hidden. And then you can click this and then unhide. I don't know who sent me this, so I'm not going to interact with it. But your NFT is going to be on OpenSea.io. You have to go to OpenSea.io, link your MetaMask wallet, and then you can view the NFT RC Anderson. All right. Bed Bath & Beyond's climbing back up on the five minute. Slowly becoming more bullish again. Let's look at Bitcoin. Bitcoin's up there. It's It hit that double top again where we had that take profit symbol. It did get rejected. Let's see if it will push past it. Because it did have a nice cooldown period. Let's see if it pushed past it. Since we had that cooldown, I think it could push. It's a real possibility. What's up? Morning. Good morning. I know. Am I loud? No. Not loud? No, I, I didn't know you were talking. Oh, yeah. I woke up and went. Okay. What do you wear? Onesie? Yeah. Okay. I might take a nap, though. Hmm. Alright, so I'm going to see if Dean sent the address so I can send that. Oh, thank you. <laughs> uh, Alright. Accidentally closed Nightbot. Let me reopen it again. Oh, boy. So I lost you, Thien Chu. I think YouTube chat censors a MetaMask address for some weird reason. If you can't send it to me, email me and then prove that it's you and I'll send you an NFT. 
because I accidentally closed off. I gotta set the word B B B Y. Be entered. Uh, Dan Chu, are you there? Just type something in a YouTube chat so they'll know you're there, so that you can get your NFT that you won. Bitcoin just broke it. It broke above that take profit, so it's it's going to try to push up towards the limits of the VWAP probably. And uh, Bam, Bam, if you're there, that um Doge One Falcon Nine thing you posted, that's definitely a fake. Oh yeah. Yeah, I figured. Mr. Drew is in the house. What's up? What's up? What's up, Drew? How's it going? Good, good, good. How are you doing? I'm doing great. Can't complain. Absolutely. Tim, did you get your hands into Molinaro Mill? No. Why? What's your thought? No drop powder for it. Is it going to 100 times for me? You never know. Not in the immediate term. I think it probably it's going to take some time, but it does have potential. I want something that will 10 times or 100 times within a year. I think it definitely can do 10 times if you ask me. I think Bed Bath & Beyond could do 10 times. I know Pulse Chain can do 10 times. It might take a little bit more than a year, though. Oh, yeah. Uh, Bitcoin's getting in that oversold range again, though. We don't think Bitcoin could do 10 times, right? <laughs> uh, in one year? No, but possibly in 2024 after the next halving. Did you see Moon the Carl's, uh, the Carl Moon, whatever his name is, his, his tweet? He said, I think I did tag you on that. He said, if Doge doesn't hit. $69 by the end of this year, he'll delete his Twitter account. $69? Yeah. How would it hit $69? God knows. <laughs> Not possible. Yeah, I responded to his tweet and I said, I think you missed a decimal somewhere. Yeah, he probably forgot to put that, that point in there. 69 There's, some, there's still buy volume coming in on Bitcoin. I'm yeah, Bitcoin's up there. It's still climbing, so. I think a way to take profit, people that had it probably have to buy Bitcoin a little bit higher. But if you take profit, you can probably get Bitcoin cheaper than this price within a few days. I would be very, very careful. It's pumping during lunchtime. And the vo but the volume's not there. This hourly volume, we're 40 minutes in. It's only uh, 1.28 million versus 3.9 million for the last hourly. Uh, let's look at Dogecoin real quick, see if it's still bouncing off support. So Dogecoin hit support earlier, it bounced off support, so it had room to climb. That was a good, really nice support level for Dogecoin. But if you look at Doge, we can do these big random pump up. One cents, two cents, three cents per Doge. Elon hasn't tweeted in a little while, so if he does tweet, it may make it go up a lot faster. All right, Bitcoin just broke that previous little resistance from that previous wick it had. But I'm going to take a break. I'll be back a little bit later. I'm glad Doge is still making its way back up, holding above 10 cents and holding above the support above 11.05. Let me uh, load the other chart real quick. If anybody wants to join the Discord, just email me, tamedark at gmail.com. <laughs> 